Thank you, Rabbi. I leaned over to Marion and I said, uh, he's an extraordinarily powerful speaker. Um, I think those words uh, really resonated with me. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk to you about a little bit about growing, when I was growing up and some of those same sentiments. But first, I have to say it's, a, uh, it's an honor to be here uh, to honor Elie Wiesel. Uh, someone who later in my life I had the great gift of getting to know, um, getting to learn from, and it's rare in someone's life that they get to meet and spend time with someone who they most admire. Uh, it's also an honor to be here and be sitting with Marion, uh, who my wife Pam and I have come to love, uh, Ellie's collaborator, his editor, uh, and his lifetime love. Marion. You know, my story is similar, I think, to many of us here, and we're the lucky ones. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, in Rockland County. Um, my family was from Eastern Europe, uh, mostly from Warsaw. Um, and uh, most of my family got out, some didn't. Um, my my grandma Ina's uh, favorite cousin was a doctor in the Warsaw Ghetto. She did have an opportunity to leave, and she decided that she wanted to stay, and she, uh, she died as a martyr in the Warsaw Ghetto. Um, and so many of us here lost so many. Uh, I feel very lucky because most of my family came with nothing, uh, like most of your families and tried to build a, a life in this great country. And growing up, I heard from my rabbi, I heard from my parents, I heard from my grandparents this mantra, never again. And uh, as a Jew growing up in the 60s, never again, it really had strong meaning. As, Rab as, as Rabbi Shmuley was talking about, what it meant was people stood by in Europe and looked the other way. And America, for a long time, stood and looked the other way. And never again meant that we had a special obligation. Never again would we, as a people, stand by when any ethnic group, any religion, was being persecuted. And the truth is that it was a great mantra, but we, as a people, we never achieved it. Ellie achieved it for us. He believed in it. He lived it every day. For him, he was on a quest to fight hate. That very concept that we grew up with that made us feel special. We were the lucky ones that made it here. And never again meant that we were going to stand up for everyone. But we didn't. We did a lot, but we didn't. And the person that did was Ellie. When I was 12 years old, I read Night. And in reading it, and I wasn't a big reader, I heard Ellie's voice, and I felt like he was speaking to me. And I think everybody felt like Ellie was speaking to them. That was his magic. He had a quiet voice, and the whole world listened. He made all of us want to do better. He made all of us want to be better. And we need that voice now, that voice against hate. You know, we're in this very precarious moment. And if you look at Europe, it's been 15 years of zero GDP growth, zero. Youth unemployment is between 25 and 30 percent. And wages, real wages, over the last 15 years are down. In the U.S., it's been 10 years of very small GDP growth, significant unemployment, and wages here in this country down. The last time we saw this situation was from 1925 to 1940. And we know how that ended. It's something that Ellie and Mary and I talked about a lot over the last few years over dinners that Pam and I cherished. But it's more important than ever 
that we hear strong voices. Probably the most important voice for us to hear right now, which we heard two weeks ago around the world, was Alicia's voice. And that voice is now being heard. It's a voice of leadership that we all have to get behind. All of our voices need to be heard. Never again. Never again for any ethnic or religious group. And never again has that sentiment and all of our energy been needed more. Six years ago, almost to the day, Oprah Winfrey, who I had the great pleasure of uh, being a partner with and working with um, on a regular basis, she's a wonderful person. Her show was ending after 25 years. She did over 10,000 shows. And we took a walk after her last show, and I asked her a question. Of all of the shows that you did, all of the interviews, the world leaders, the influential people, the celebrities, which meant the most? And she hesitated for one moment, and she looked at me, and she said, Ellie Wiesel and our interview at Auschwitz. Ellie Wiesel and our interview at Auschwitz. And she said to me, Ellie is a man who lived through hell without ever hating. Ellie is a man who, exposed, who was exposed to the most depraved aspects of human nature, but still manages to find love, to believe in God, and to experience joy. The person that I looked up to, the spirit that I looked up to, for never again, the person that really lived it, that lived what I heard from my grandparents, from my rabbi, from my parents, was Elie Wiesel. And that is who we all need to get behind, that spirit and that, that ideal. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here tonight. I was very honored to, to just be present for, uh, with Alicia in, in for that special moment. And I thank you, Rabbi, for inviting me. Thank you, Marion. And we have a little tape that just gives you, we all know Ellie. We can't really capture him in a tape, but this is a little something about a great man that we all love. Thank you so much.